Mina Konnichiwa, it's David. And Mina. And um, we just got done watching um, Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin, Episode 1, mm. Blue Eyed Kasval. Mm. And we figured we'd sit down for a couple minutes and chatter about it. Huh? So, first, how do the viewers at home watch Blue Eyed Kasval? Um, well, in. Legally. Okay, legally. Um, the way that you watch it is if you are outside of Japan, um, you can go to daisuki.net. That's D-A-I-S-U-K-I dot net. I really like dot net. <sighs> yeah, you can, um, you can do a rental of it there. Mm. Um, you can rent it, I believe it's six ninety nine US. Um, and basically it is available in Japanese with subtitles in about a gajillion languages. And it is also um, English dubbed. Um, the English dub is pretty high quality, actually. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of um, relatively well-known um, actors. Yeah. And um, as far as voice goes, yeah. uh, a lot of them are, if you're familiar with Unicorn, yeah. um, it's the same company that did the dubbing there. So and a lot of the same actors. Yeah, a lot of the familiar voices. Like um, Adult Char is full frontal, yeah. um, same voice. Um, so there's a lot of crossover there. Mm. Um, and so it's, that's, that's a good one. If you're in Japan and you are watching this and you want to watch the movie, get it in Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, you can buy it pretty much anywhere. Um. You get the super fancy one and you buy yeah. all your money because that's what we all do anyway. Yeah. Well, the, the super fancy stuff, um, you won't be able to get that until, what was it, April. Oh, okay. I think maybe maybe I don't know, Save but there, pennies. there's a there's a super awesome version that's coming out, uh, and it's like a hundred dollars or something for the one episode. Yes. <laughs> um, allegedly, mm -hmm. right now there's going to be four episodes. Okay, that's what they said. Mm -hmm. Um, but Sunrise doesn't like to stick with those things. Yeah. Really, they don't. I mean, because they're just projecting. How many yet was Unicorn? Um, Unicorn was supposed to be six. It ended up being seven. Right. Um, and the six didn't even get announced until like later mm. anyway. Um, so just that, that they said it's four doesn't really mean anything yet. Right. Um, the, the, um, manga is something like 23 books, I think is mm. where it's at now. Mm. Um, so I don't know what they're going to do with it. The, honestly, this episode didn't really cover a lot. No, I think this episode was specifically designed to make me cry. That's... Um, I know it's not. It's not even begun alert, yet. Yeah. Spoiler alert! Mm. They're all going to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> be, I, I don't. I don't know what they're going to cover in those four episodes. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be weird if they keep at this pace because then they'll cover pretty much nothing. Um, that, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the. Um, Literally, what what occurs in the first episode here? Yeah, spoilers. Um, yeah, spoilers. Uh, but I mean, this is all stuff that if you are familiar with Gundam, you're already going to be familiar with. Right. Um, they're just showing you parts yeah. of it that you haven't necessarily seen. Um, so basically, we start off with um, Zion Zun Daikun dying, right. uh, which everyone who's watched Gundam knows this happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically, it is um, Shar and Sela. Yeah. Um, Artesia and um, Caspol hmm. being um, manipulated, maneuvered. Yeah, uh, and and basically shoveled off the the um, from off space right. to Earth. Right, but I mean, we see also we see a lot of the family dynamic with the zombies and the Rowls. What happens to the Rowls? We get a good idea. We get to see Rumba Rowl being. The coolest. Yeah, I mean, he was already the coolest, but, but you get to see him young and action Rao. Yeah, and, Rao and um, his eventual wife. Yeah, Harmon. Harmon is amazing. She's, you know, the hero of the episode. She goes She's in, awesome. She goes in and does the stuff that you would see um, Sh Char as... Oh, when he, um, as Quattro. Yeah. Yeah. She does all of the things you would expect from Quattro. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, which is kind of like cool. She's a spy and a smuggler and stuff like that. Yeah. She's, she's a really great character. And yeah. I mean, she's, she's a great character in Mobile Suit Gundam. She is. She absolutely um, is. And she's only in like 
three episodes, four episodes, something right. like that. But we get to see why she's as interesting and badass as she is. Yes. We get to see why um, she works so well with Raul. Yes. Mm. Um, so they, they are definitely a standout in the episode. They are wonderful. And like, if you want any idea at all why Shar ends up the character that he does, this episode alone will do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you want to know why he's crazy about blowing everybody up on Earth and killing all the zombies ever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> for, a, for a basis of comparison, mm -hmm. um, I believe this covers basically the first two books worth of material. Yeah. Um, and like I said, there, there's like 22 or 23 right it, now. It was slow. Um, I mean, it, it, it not in a bad way. Slow. It, this was the events of um, like three days. Yeah. Um, and if you are not familiar with Mobile Suit Gundam, the origin, the mm -hmm. manga, um, the manga basically is a retelling of the one year war. Mm -hmm. um, and But it starts earlier. And so this flashback gives us um, a chance to kind of see where the characters come from. Mm. And then it moves through and you get to track the story of the white base. Mm. Um, and, of course, um, Captain Bright Noah and Amaro Ray and all, all of that team. Um, so you're going to, theoretically, theoretically, we're going to get that story. Right. Okay. Um I, I don't know how they're going to do that, though. At this pace. At this pace. Um, so that's, yeah, see, I thought it was going to be just Char going through flight school. It could be. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, that's what I thought originally the idea was. We were going to see Char going through school, becoming this new person. Um, well, I see, I don't know. I don't know. I, was... I have no idea from this episode how he gets back as a new person. Mm-hmm. Fighting on the side of Zion. Yeah. Because it's crazy. Like, well. It's crazy. I mean, everyone knows that, that Char is not fighting for Zion for Zion. Yeah. Um, he is fighting for his own purpose and for his father's legacy and, you know, for his Do they, sister. But I thought they didn't know it was who he was. They don't know he's cast well. Most of them don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Nobody knows until hmm. too late, basically. Okay. Um, then they blow up. And Yeah. Um, but lots of explosions. Yeah, lots of explosions. And there's also some interesting um, little sort of hints and teases. Um, like, for example, um, Cassilia Zabi. Uh, she's very, she's young in this episode. Mm. She's not as young as Cass, Fall, and Artesia. Um, but, but she's, like a, she's like a teenager. She behaves like a teenager. Um She's definitely a teenager because yeah. she's only in her twenties in Mobile Suit Gundam. Right. Um, she's not very old, yeah. um, but she, you see her in a um, in a military hat. That's like a Valkyrie um, helmet almost. It's it is it's something like that, but it's also reminiscent of Char's, Char's helmet, helmet that he ends up in. Um, so you, like, there's a, a little bit of lead in there. I wonder if he picks it to mock her. Later. It could be, or it could just you, That's yeah. I don't know. Traditional helmet, you know. It's like yeah. Style after some, like putting on a centurion helmet now. You know? Yeah. Um. So that's you know a thing. And there's a there's at least one major retcon, right, in the first episode. Um. Well, as far as continuity goes, there's a huge one. Yeah. Um, because throughout the episode, this is, this is about 10 years before Mobile Suit Gundam. Right. Um, and we see gun tanks. Um, lots of them actually. Yeah, yeah tons. Um. The Earth Federation forces that are on the station? Side one. Side one. Yeah. Yeah, they have their gun tanks and that's how they're kind of managing the budding revolution there. Yes. Um, yes. And they're scary. They are. I mean, they're kind of laughable in Origins. It's it's an ugly thing, and it's not really that terrifying. But because I guess it's an angle thing, right? All of our shots of the gun cannons in this, in Origins, are you know from the ground up, from from the position of humans human beings, looking up at them, looking up at them, so that we're seeing the tracks yeah. and the distant cannon mm -hmm. at cannons, and so it's. Actually, incredibly intimidating, incredibly frightening. It's like, you know, the, the, the scary moment of a tank coming right at you, but then also there's big guns on it because, you know, why yeah. do it halfway? This is, they're, they're um, significantly different than mm. the design of the gun tank in mm. Mobile Suit Gundam. 
Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Skun Tank is basically a character. It looks kind of like a yeah. like a football player or a something. Bit. Like a it's big and blocky, very eighties or late seventies style animation. Right. Um, and these are More tanks. tanks. Yeah. They're 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 intimidating. They're scary. Yeah. Um, I think we're at one point we're we're crushed by one from the point of view of a protester. Yes. And it's like, Ugh. yeah. Ugh. Um, and this is also sort of interesting because um, this is the first time we've seen um, the struggle between the Earth Federation and um, the budding Zeon, um, the, um, mm -hmm. the um, Principality of Zeon, right. um, from a position that isn't at war. Right, because it, ultimately what we're really looking at here, the Federation forces there are basically like the police. Yeah. And they're dealing with an uh, struggle for independence happening while yeah. they're still technically like, because these are these are guys from sign one yeah they're locals they're local boys they are federation because that's their job not because they but that doesn't mean they're not space noids right they're yeah. spa they are space noids they're yeah. unquestionably space noids so there's a lot of interesting moments like between Giran and some military guys some federation military guys where he's basically like um, you recognize me as a military force you're gonna do what I say and they're like yeah, yeah kind of Mm -hmm. I guess I am. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so we see, um, we see like the relationships with all of the the children, um, the zombie children. Yeah. Um, Garma is um, Shar's age. He's yes, he Caspal's age, so yes. he's a little kid at he this point. Um, and a little brat too. Communication. Yeah, yeah, he is. Old spoiled brat. Um, he is definitely is, a brat at this point. What's her face? Is his sister? Cassilia. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They're all siblings. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we also, we are introduced to another Zabi who mm. we've never actually seen before. <laughs> for a good reason. Um, for a good reason. Um, and he, he is a part of this whole thing. Um, and... <laughs> yeah, I'm just <laughs> double-checking myself here. Um... Yeah, Sasro. Sasro is mm. his name. I uh, briefly forgot there. Um, he doesn't make it. Yeah, I mean, well, this is... He's a zombie. <laughs> right? None of the zombies make it. Well... Um, yeah, with one glaring exception, but nobody she's does. she's still a glimmer in her father's eye at that point. She's not even born yet. That's what, that's what that means. Is that what that means? She's just a glimmer in her father's eye. Oh, I thought... Oh, oh, okay. I see. I see. <laughs> I've, I've never really thought about that saying uh, before. Well, that's what it means. There sure. Is. Okay. I'm teaching you English idioms because I'm an English teacher. Yeah. So, um... We see, um, Dozel Zabi. Mm. And we see, um, as a part of that whole thing with Sasro, we mm -hmm. see how he gets his um, telltale scars. Yes. Um, and he gets to be pretty frightening there yeah. and weird. Um... He's he's a bit like uh like uh I've been drinking if you couldn't tell thinking Mr. Tor he's a little Mr. Tor yeah he's very intense in a good way in an intense way, but like in a charming like oh you big lug yeah it's a shame you're gonna kill a lot of people and then die yeah well and he's still he remains that way like and and Sastro tells him you know. Stop it with being, being stop having such a kind heart. Yes. Your kind heart is going to get you killed. All those people want to um, kill us. With, and and of course, Dozel is like the only zombie that you even give a shit about in Mobile Suit Gundam. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of them are all you know shit stinkers. Well, that's on purpose. So yeah. We, so we don't hurt, hate Minerva. We can like Maybe. Minerva yeah. because her his dad was her dad was kind of a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Minerva is a important part of the story. So mm -hmm. um, you know her dad can't be completely abhorrent. <laughs> Um, Wouldn't that be nice in the real world? You're a yeah. nice guy, so automatically your dad's kind of an okay guy. Me too. Yeah. My so dad's a very nice guy. <laughs> the um, but yeah, you get to see Dozel. Dozel is like um, he's he he um kind of remind he would fit in with like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like he is a um. He is a little larger than life yeah. compared to how he is in Mobile Suit Gundam. Yeah, he's an uh, anime 10. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of cool because like, it, it gives you a lot of characterization where you didn't really get a lot of that before. And honestly, like even Celia is a little, a little goofy. Mm -hmm. But in so much as we're... I feel like on some level we are seeing all of this through the lens of the children. 
Correct. So, like, some of the caricatures of what characters end up being very serious in the UC, it seems like it's because, well, we're kind of seeing them from a pair of damaged kids' point of view. Yeah. Rather than a totally neutral point of view. Yeah, because Celia definitely gets, like, the most intense bit with Caspal. Yeah. Um, he's also, basically like, fuck you, I'm not scared of you. And she's like, you will be! And she's like, he's like, no, I won't. And yeah. she's like, oh, I'm leaving, inexplicably. And then we get... Um, Cassilia is naked for way longer than she really should have been. Um, huh? The whole scene where she wakes up in the <coughs> in the middle of the night, and how did I miss naked Celia? I have no idea. It was on the screen for a very long time. She gets up. She is completely naked and just kind of sits there, like for a good number of seconds, and then she gets up and she walks to the window the and she looks out window. over the window. Um, and like it pans up over her real slowly and she's completely naked. Um, it's, I mean, it happens all the time in Gundam, but like it's, it was jarringly long. Do you know what somebody told me in the manga of the UC? Mm -hmm. Char's shower scene is a lot sexier. It is. Yeah. Like in the, in the anime, it's just, you know, oh, (laughs) he's a naked guy and that's it. Yeah. Apparently in the manga, it's very drawn out and very steamy. It's Yeah, it's for the ladies, mm. basically. Yes, he is. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, Cassilia is totally naked for quite a while. It, <laughs> it just, it was a little jarring. It's like, um, it was, it's almost like, like a parking scene or something. <laughs> it was just like, come on, just This doesn't move establish on. anything. We can get on a plot. Now. Um, yeah. Like, naked parking scene. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, it was um it was weird. What do they call that fan service, right? Yeah, um it it wasn't like I think her hair is too weird to be sexy. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll see. I don't know. But um you should watch it. Yes, yes. It's it's very good. It's very good. Um it was just that was a little jarring. Yeah. Uh, not that it happened, they just lingered. Yeah. Um <laughs> This is like almost at the this is creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no. It felt like a voyeur or something. I'm feeling uncomfortable now. Can we change that? Um <laughs> The, um, let's see, and what, Girin, um, is very much Girin. Yeah. He, um, and it's, it's kind of, you, you don't get a lot of Girin. No, you only you get a do couple get of to cuts. See, you do get to see, and I'm sure you'll see a lot more of him coming up. Because he's going to be the one who he's going to be the one who deals with Raoul to get Raoul back on their side. Yeah, book three and four of the manga are literally like a story about Girin. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do that. I don't know if they're going to do that in the mm-hmm. movies or not. Mm-hmm. But um, it would be it would be a good next movie to focus on uh, that direction. Um, well, you also get to see a lot more of Celia's relationship with her siblings. Like you. you- <laughs> <laughs> you, you get in, you get in the UC that basically like she's kind of shit on by all of them, but she's actually very accomplished and murderous. Well, murderous, but like you really see why yeah. she's psychotic and murderous because she's basically a child of abuse. Yeah, it's very clear that her brothers have spent a long time beating on her. Yes, like, she's like, the only girl in the family. Like literally, they are hitting her and things. Like mm-hmm. it's actual physical abuse. So like, there's no question in my mind why she would behave the way she does. Yep. Um, don't hate your daughters. Yes. So they yes. to be space noid psychopaths. Yeah. Um, but I, I like that, um, you, you don't get a lot of gear in, no. but there is like, um, there is like the moment where Degwin is, um, trying to sort of mentor the children. Um, and like, he's like telling Giran that, you know, he needs to learn to be manipulative and mm. stuff like that. Um, which is of course... You know. Well, it was weird. I read that more like he was like, okay, now's your time to practice. Mm-hmm. Like, it was basically like, here's your homework, son. Go do this thing. Yeah. Go be more manipulative. And, and he's like, yes, dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it, you, you don't, they don't use a lot of words to establish what Girin becomes. I think it's pretty effective. Yeah. And I, well, I think it's interesting too because the brother who we end up losing immediately is definitely like the worst of them yeah Sasaro is the worst so as bad as things get with the zombies in the uc they would have been a lot worse if Celia didn't blow up her brother or yeah. whoever had um had Sasaro survived it would have um, been a lot worse because he was definitely his dad's advisor and he's yeah. definitely a lot 
just openly evil. Yeah, he. I mean, he he wanted to kill the Riles, and like mm-hmm. he was he was crazy. He was and, like, Let's just kill all the kids. Yes, yes. Um, I like Garen, right? His his basic response to to the whole thing was like, "I'm not gonna deal with kids." Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna plot about kids one way or the other. I'm not worried about kids. Mm-hmm. I got other shit to do, <clears throat> which I guess is what you do when you're evil, but not totally immoral. Maybe? Yeah, which is, um, it's, it's kind of, it's, like, I don't, everything seems really intentional in the movie. Yeah. Uh, which is oh, a good thing. it doesn't thing. seem like anything's wasted. So. Um, so, I think that that's, that's interesting because, of course, Giren, um, uh, isn't just killed by children or whatever. Like, Giren is, um, in, in Mobile Suit Gundam is taken out by family, yeah. effectively. Um, which is, you know, sad, but it, I, I definitely, I definitely think that that was purposeful. Yeah. Um, Casval and um, Artesia's mother. Oh. That, uh, oh. yeah, as a parent, that was just I mean, painful. like, at least with Disney movies, mom's already dead. <laughs> so I don't have to deal with that, but, like, to see... But, <laughs> <laughs> if you if you are a parent, you'll mm. definitely understand. If you are not a parent, um, there are there are moments in life where you basically have to lie to your children, yes. and it hurts yes. very very badly. Yes. But there's no good alternative. No. Um, and and her role in that story is just gut wrenching. Mm. Um, and I, I think that yeah, <laughs> it's. It's 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 a hard one, mm. um, and it just furthers that whole old people equals evil. Yes, yes. <laughs> like there's, there's no debate. If it's a Tumino piece, it definitely wants you to know that the older you are, the more likely you are to be evil son of a bitch. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's the whole lesson is, mm. is that um, uh, adults don't understand um, the 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 young or the future. Mm. Um, that's the yeah. That's the social science fiction of Gundam. Right. Um, I I actually I really liked the moment with um, with the noble woman who um, the children and and the mother go to stay with. Where well, she's not just any noble woman. Well, yeah. Um, where like it's just this like sort of tense woman berating another woman thing, and, mm-hmm. and it was it was really raw. Mm-hmm. And um, and and felt different. It felt too real. Yeah, a lo- So one thing that carried through this entire. It's not long. It's yeah. like you know. It's it's an it's, hour. It's, it's an hour. Really an hour long. That's um, right. it's an hour, and it's really, really real. Yeah. Um, anime janai. <laughs> anime janai. Um, <laughs> there, there's a there was a point there where we were watching it, and it's one of those like you can tell it's a comedy of er- tragedy of errors, I guess. Mm-hmm. Where like, oh, this guy went to the wrong direction, and this is happening over there, and like, and somebody's getting sent to a tower for reals. Like that's really something that's happening, and I'm like, this is too close to actual history. Yeah. This is too scary because it's like it's too intense because like real history is is that series of like tragic unnecessary events, mm-hmm. and it's it follows all of those beats. It follows that Rob Donahue rule that history is stupid. Yes. And full of just stupid decisions. Yes. Um, that, yeah, not everything is intentional and planned. And, right. Like, the uh, plot, the story, everything coming from the writer is absolutely intentional, but the story that is being told involves a lot of those, ah, why is she making that decision? Human error. Human error. Yes. Reasonable, logical, human error. I just said logical human error. <laughs> Well, it's logical <laughs> that humans would do it. Yes. Mm-hmm. The um and so from very early on, this is one of the things that got me into Gundam in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that you have people who are making very human choices, yeah. and sometimes those choices are just stupid. Yeah. Um, and sometimes stupid decisions get people hurt and killed. Yeah. And sometimes stupid decisions end up shaping the future. And and utterly innocent people are just left in untenable situations. Yeah. For no reason other than who they were or where they were. Absolutely. Um, when they were. I th- you, you even have Cass's, uh, Cass's father or mother say that. 
Yeah. Oh, how, why why were you destined to be born so and so's uh, offspring? Yeah. Like it sucks. And yeah, um, so that's that's a recurring thing, and that's mm-hmm. I feel that that's been a, a, a big theme throughout all of Gundam. Mm-hmm. I think that it really hits home here. Um, origin is particularly effective um, in in the manga. Um, it humanizes a lot of what goes on yeah. by taking the stories that we are familiar with and giving them real world analogs. Mm. Um, like, I want to say, it's been a very long time, I want to say Giren sets shop in Los Angeles. Hmm. Um, Which is where anime, anim, um, what? Anaheim? Anaheim. Yeah, yeah, because Anaheim is right near Los Angeles. Right. Um, you know. For those of you who don't, don't know the geography of California, <laughs> um, um, you've got Los Angeles, which is up against the coast, mm-hmm. and then you have Orange County, which is actually also up against the coast, mm-hmm. um, directly south, um, sort of south by southeast of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Anaheim is right at the north end of orange county Mm -hmm. um like you can basically hop on a road and be in los angeles in like 10 minutes Mm -hmm. um it's also where disneyland is yeah it's also where disneyland is um oh god imagineers lost their jobs and then went over and built giant robots yeah i mean literally the single best group of animatronics builders are right there in anaheim so it would make sense that Anaheim Electronics built um, war machines. You heard it here first. Yeah. Um, All in an attempt to build a new body for Walt Disney's frozen head. Or whatever. We went a strange place. Um, Sorry about that. This is what happens when Disney buys Star Wars. Oh, I, right? see, I don't see it all. <laughs> well, they have to make animatronics of war machines mm, now. Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. Um, and so they have the, the frameworks and things like uh, that. Ah, so you know. Giant robots. Any um, minute now. Yeah. Okay, so so Zabi Garen Zabi sets up in LA, probably. Yeah. Hey, he, I'm pretty sure he does in the the, the manga. Mm, okay. Um, and I, I I think that that's that's a very effective way of of uh, humanizing these stories. Um, the original by setting them in LA. By setting them in the real world. <laughs> okay. So just making shit up. Right. Side. Jabro and whatever. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, of course, the the space stations have to be made up. Yeah. But the the, the Earth <laughs> or locations, do they? Um, the Earth locations don't necessarily have to be. They were in the original series for a million different reasons. I'm sure, probably Tomino didn't want to do it unless he'd seen it. Um, you know, and he wanted to make things feel exotic and whatever. Um, or he didn't want to do the research. Or he didn't want to do the research. This no was before judgment. the internet. No judgment. Um, this is before the internet. He was on tight, tight deadlines. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I think that I think that that's a very effective way of humanizing the story. Mm, agreed. Um, I think that they'll probably go with that. I'm hoping that. Um, and that's just it. It, it felt very real. Mm. It felt it felt like opening a history book mm. set in UC 68. Right. Um, our old future. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I, ironically though, mm-hmm. what I would have really liked to have seen is, you know, like the Universal Century Charter uh, being signed, um, like way back. Yeah. Um, that's, that's crazy because that whole thing gets complicated later. It does. It gets really complicated. Um, but I don't right because we get from the crone the old woman who was what's his face's Di- daikun's uh, Zeon Zoom Daikun Zeon Zoom yeah that what you said Zeon Zoom Daikun what he said <laughs> uh, his his wife yeah. basically she's talking about this whole weird kind of pseudo religion that the second generation of space noise developed yeah. Um, and she's, you know, his wife, so... And, and it's something that he talks about, too, in the brief time that we see him before yes. he dies. Um, it's going to be taken to Golgotha. And right. He'll have to give a speech from his cross. From his cross. Yeah. That's... Uh, we can do some Bible stuff, but we won't. Anyway. Um, Gethame, right? Uh, yeah. Gethame? It's not that far off. Anyway. Uh, so, 
she's talking about the whole weird space religion, so we know they've already formed, they've already fully formed all of their ideas about the coming of the new types. Oh, yeah. Like, this is unquestionably something that well, she some mentions people them. already know. Does she directly mention them? She doesn't mention them directly, but she, um, she confronts... Kid. Um, she confronts um, the the mother right. and uh, is quizzing her right. on on Zian Zub Dai Khan's philosophy, right. and be, of course she's stuck like a tear in the headlight. She doesn't right. know what to say, yeah, she but she is elder. demanding that she tell her what is what is the next stage for humanity. What right. are what are they going to become? Right. Um, and but because this is all known right. already, like. Yeah. The, the idea of new types is already set in a lot of important people's minds. Right. It's not something that is publicly talked about yet. No. Um, but this is an idea that is at least 70 years old at this right. point. Right. Um, so, the I mean, this goes back longer than anyone's been alive as far as the story is concerned. So, do we... Okay, so we see Casabelle rocks and shit. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, he's in a gun cannon at one point, and he blows up, like, eight other gun cannons. And the only thing that stops him is his sister starts crying. Correct. Right? So, we... He's a new type? No question? Oh, yeah. Because there's no way this, like, eight-year-old kid does that. Unless... He, has a, he has a flash um, that is very, very similar to the one that he has um, as an adult. A face sparkle? Yeah. Um... So that I, I think that would be the hint that he's awakening as a new type. Okay, so very early. Then. Yeah, they're they're they are pushing that back, mm. um, because of course in um, in Mobile Suit Gundam it's sort of up in the air for a while. Yeah, um, he says he's not. So yeah, and so forth. yeah, he's he's actually really busy putting his um, sort of eggs in different baskets at that point. Like yeah. he is putting his faith in Lala. Yeah, he really wants Lala and some other people to be the first. Yeah, so that's not a big thing to him. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, that changes and he sort of embraces the idea. Yeah. Um, and that becomes core to his philosophy. Yeah. But um, he, I, I think that the implication is, is that at least in this version of the story, he is awakening young. Mm. Because of severe trauma. Yeah. Don't yeah. murder a dude's dad. <laughs> don't, don't, if you find a little intense boy, and you'll know, you know intense kids. You know them. If you find a little intense kid, don't murder his dad. Just don't, because he's going to blow you up. I mean, I think that's a pretty logical yeah. <laughs> lesson well, that we can all use in our own lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, don't murder the dads of little intense kids. They might grow up to be Char. Oh my god, there's some great... I mean, the an the animation of the kid's face at times is fucking brilliant. There are just these moments where he's like, I'm going to kill all of you guys. Yeah. I, I think my, my, my favorite bit was... Um, <laughs> In the the tower conversation with mm -hmm. the mother, yeah. when he doesn't even speak, yeah. um, and the mother is talking to um, Artesia, right. um, Sela, and um, he Benevolent, his face yeah. is just doing stuff. Yeah, um, so much expression. It, yeah, that was probably more painful than actually listening to them talk. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, mom, I'm totally on your bullshit. I'm so on to your bullshit, and you're like, uh, he knows. Oh God. Uh. Yeah. It's um, because of course he knows. Yeah. He's old enough that he can see through her bullshit. That's what children do. That's what they specialize in at a certain point. Yeah. So, and he, yeah, he's he's 11. Is he 11? 11. Okay. Okay. He's 11 at this part in the story. Um, he's so cute. They're both so cute. Yeah. Yeah. They, and the cat. Oh, God, don't even start me on Lucifer. <laughs> Lucifer, the kitten. Uh, Man, why have we not seen like eight stuffed animals of that all over the place? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, think that, I think that Bandai is... Um, definitely behind on that they need to get their ass in gear um because when you see this you're gonna want the cat you're oh gonna, yeah you're gonna want a stuffed cat you're gonna want a pencil case whatever um <laughs> pencil cases on the brain and the cat of course um helps to further humanize Rambo Rao. yeah mm -hmm. um <laughs> in in an uh, adorable moment yeah. yeah um which again could just be kind of our point of view from the little kids yeah it's definitely. I mean, like, it's definitely a thing that happened, Absolutely. but some of the, you know, over-the-top stuff. Well, we have this, um, we, I mean, we already have this picture of Rambo Rao because yeah. of Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, you see that one image, that one still, you mean? 
where he's mm. he's lifting up Lift, yes. Sela and then Char standing next to him with <laughs> cute pants and adorable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I mean Ral is really only in a few episodes. Most of the characters in Mobile Suit Gundam are only in it for a few episodes. <laughs> it's true, like you're not really um, making an exception when you say that. Because, yeah, well, because, you know, Tomino likes to introduce people, make them really, really cool, and then kill them. Um, but That's a scary statement. Yeah. Um, so, Robert Ral is only in a few episodes, but of course he is immensely humanized. He has some of the most memorable moments in all of Gundam. And and he's stuck with people. Like, unbelievably stuck with people. Yeah. So much so that, like, he's, you know, the benefactor coach all through the Gundam um, Tri-Fighter series and that yeah. sort of thing. Like, he's just, he's stuck with people as this warm, affable father figure, despite the fact that he was absolutely with the bad guys. Like, no question, you know? It's I, like, w- <laughs> I want to go back and look at... Um... Look at Mobile Suit Gundam um, mm-hmm. to the team that Ral um, fights with his his goof troop. Yeah, um, and um, I want to look and see if those characters are actually the the crew that um, does the the cat mission. Yeah, because he specifically tells them he calls out he bothers to ask one of the guys what's your name. Yeah, it's so and so. I mean, we're gonna go save a kitten. I think it would Seriously. be remiss if it weren't. Yeah, but um, his but face I, I was so it. specific. Mm-hmm. I you know. I have to imagine. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and yeah, like you were saying, Rumba Rao becomes important to build fighters and build mm-hmm. fighters try. And he's just he's uh, a weird father figure. And yeah. he remains a weird father figure. Yeah. Even though he's a bad guy. Kind of. It's complicated. He's not Shit's a bad compl- guy. Right. There's, right. there's no bad guys. It's complicated. Um, there are bad guys. <laughs> yes, there is obvious. There are bad guys, but there are not bad sides. Yeah. I guess that's way more important. Yeah. That's... Like, I don't I don't blame Cecilia for being horrendous. No. Um, I, it's just I don't circumstance. Even blame, I don't even blame what's-his-face. So, <laughs> fucking Dozel, Dozel. But Dozel's... <laughs> he's got brain damage. Yeah. Like, it's just, he's, yes. he's, a, he's a... He's... He's an ape. He's a dumb guy. Yeah. In a position of incredible power. And ultimately... Which is so you know, real. Ugh, so real. Yeah, his... Um, yeah, he, he has no place there. Yeah. He's He doesn't belong there. Yeah. Um, and he he's... He's Marv. Yes. He's strangely, um, you know, strangely honorable for his situation. Yeah. And ultimately his... Um, he is responsible for the person that changes the world. Sure. So... Other than Char. Um, well, I mean... She, she changes the world. Yeah. Um, and so that doesn't come out of nowhere. Mm. Um, so that's that's nice. Mm. The... Um, I don't know. I don't know. The, 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 like, Giran is Giran, and Giran was basically raised to be a raging douche. Like, he's... But a subtle one. Yeah. Um, it's just his brother, who the older brother, who's an open douche. It was just his dad times two, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, Giran ends up basically being, you know, space Hitler. Um, but yeah. Giran is like, I don't know, I don't know. It 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 feels it feels organic. Yeah. Um, where it might not have in the original series. Right. Um, they're, this, they're just brightly colored bad out. guys in the series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you get you get indications. You get indications that these people grew to be this way because of their familial situation. But now seeing it, it feels <coughs> different. And that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, man, it, it was, I mean, a lot happened. A, a lot yeah. happened. As, as we said, it was like a three-day period. It was a very short s- story that goes over real quick. But a lot of things occurred. Yeah. Um, so the opening, though, right, is not way back when. It's just at the start of the World Year War. Correct. It's when Char is an adult. We see him in the Red Comet. We actually see him earn his nickname. Um, what did you think about the animation style? Oh, the um, the the CG. Yeah. Um, it's a it, so it's a it's a weird blend of um, CG backgrounds and mobile suits with. Um, more or less traditional animation mm. um, for characters. Mm. Um, I mean, it's, it's, of course, computer graphics regardless, but it's 
more traditionally animated. Mm. Um, and it's definitely done from drawn storyboards. Mm. Uh, I liked it. I thought that it was really good. Mm. Um, I think that it, it does good well to contrast the mobile suits and the people. Um, yeah. Like, there's, um, there's a split second where you see the... Um, the commander type Zaku, the the red comet, um, float and fly in front of a ship, and it's full of people. Um, and there's definitely there's definitely a contrast there. There's mm. there's a fucking robot right there, and then there's people. Um, I, I I like sort of I, I traditional animation. I mm. think that it fits well with Gundam, mm. but I think that this lets the um, the animators have a much bigger breadth and scope. Mm. Um, and I, I like that. I think that that's cool. It also um, it, it enables them to do better fast paced fighting. You don't have yeah. to worry about like you know speed lines and <laughs> stuff like that. Well, there were still some streaks and stuff. There, there yeah. were, but that was all artistic choice. That wasn't right. having to cut corners. Right. You know, this there, nobody had to outsource the animation. Um, it could all just be done by creators being creators. I can see people are going to complain about it. Some people are going to complain about it. But mm -hmm. I thought it was... Beautiful. I thought it was... Um, well, it was certainly shiny. <sighs> I, I, it I was. like shiny. So. Yeah. Um, I don't think that there was enough to to give a lot of commentary on. Yeah. Um, you can see how it plays out in a longer, more drawn-out environment, because I don't know. I'm eager to see what they do with it, because um, if we do tell the story of the White Base, mm -hmm. um, we are going to see the RX-78-2. We are going to see goofs, we're, Zaku's. We're going to see a lot of the those classic machines. Um, and that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. The animation style is very, very similar to that which they used in Gun Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. Um, yeah. But the thing is, is that Unicorn was gorgeous. Right, with brand new robots that were built for yeah. that style. Yeah. The Zaku held up, though. I, I think I the, the Zaku, Zaku looked really beautiful. great. Um, it, it did. It was a huge improvement. It's nice being able to see the... Um, the insignias and decals and stuff on the mobile suits while they're moving around. Yeah. Uh, usually you only get to see those whenever they do like, you know, a vignette shot where you get to see the shield or whatever right. um, from up close. Um, but it's nice being able to see all of that detail just straight out. That's, yeah. I like that. And the suits with skirts looked good too. Um, but it's, it's going to be, actually called. <laughs> it's going to be difficult for me to, um, to reconcile that because in Unicorn, um, one of the first real like hardcore scenes you see in the first movie is the unicorn, um, activating its psycho frame. Right. And it's cool because it's the first time you like in modern mecha anime mm -hmm. that you see a transformation, like a full transformation where there's not like shit coming off and then magically reattaching and stuff mm -hmm. like this isn't voltron this is a machine that is doing things right um and it's very live and organic and active yeah um and then you see it fighting like the kshatriya and the i don't think they will be able to do anything that compares with that level of animation mm -hmm. with those classic mobile suits yeah they might be able to but i'm not holding my breath yeah the gravity and the weight of the... <laughs> you felt metal hitting metal Yeah. when you were watching the unicorn fights. Now, if if they wanted to keep up the same tenor that they've got with this one, mm -hmm. instead of, like, the, the the fight with the Zakus and the ships was was neat, it was big, but I think that if they, um, if they mm -hmm. did some work on... It, if they kept with that same sort of aesthetic mm -hmm. where we saw the gun tanks where we see it from a human perspective and stuff. Yeah. I think that that could be really cool. They did that too. You were saying there's the shot with the, the Zaku and then you're seeing from the inside of the ship. So you yeah. get the scale. I, there was definitely a lot more attention paid from looking from the ground up at these things rather than seeing these things as the main characters. Yeah. One thing that I think that was um, in the original series, a sort of remiss um, is the first time that Amuro gets in the Gundam, it's laying on the ground. Right, so we don't really get to see a scope, you know, a scope. Yeah, like in in like you do you do occasionally get to see shots where like there's a character near the Gundam's foot. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's that's cool. Or but, right close up near the capsule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't think that that really gives you a sense of what this thing is. Right. Um, that was better handled in Double Zeta. Double Zeta. Yes, yeah, Double Zeta does there's a lot of better. stuff where they really talk about, like, the, this is the biology of these things compared to a small, puny human. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I, 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 I want to see characters looking up Mm -hmm. i want to see uh i want to see that sort of scope and scale and sort of no it's worse yeah um because because these things are scary yeah um and i think that they've they've set some really really good groundwork to do that yeah i think everything that comes after is gonna be really fucking brutal (laughs) Yeah. yeah i mean we have a couple of deaths in this episode. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we start off with death. Of course, this is a story about the ramifications of one death. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's, like, a couple of civilian casualties. There's, you know, a zombie casualty. Um, and there's some people we can already write off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not that I want to, but come on. Fortunately, there's some people we can't write off. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's the best thing about watching the show. Like, we know that some of the characters have to survive. most who lives and who dies. Like, I know Sailor's going to be cool. Yes. No matter what, Sailor's cool. And Sailor survives the entire series. Mm. She's one of the only characters that lives through the whole thing. And since Char is Space Mary Magdalene, he'll be okay, too. Yeah. Because Layla's Space Jesus, so you have to gender flip it. See? Yeah. Um, so there, that's, that's nice. There... It's it is gonna be it is it is ramping up to be something pretty harsh. So refill your lithium prescriptions before you watch. Yeah. Um don't ex don't go in expecting, you know Maybe. just lighthearted. But that's been good so far. Yeah. They've um they've given a, a lot of take. Yeah, I mean like you are coming in and you're watching an assassination and you're watching the children and the widow, and that's hardcore, and then they give you a moment where the heroic soldier has to go save a kitty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and it's adorable, yeah. and it, it mm-hmm. helps a mm-hmm. lot. And then you have moments where, um, you know, the, the mother is talking with the children, and it's really, really grueling, and then there's a kitty. Basically, Lucifer is, um, well, I don't want to spoil that, but he's nice. Um, and he's um, he is basically the, the emotional relief for mm. this movie. Mm. Um, and, yeah, so I think I think it was a good balance. It's mm. closer to, like, Double Zeta, um, as far as that balance goes. Mm. Like, you have... In a good way. Happy, cheerful moments. Yeah, I like Double Zeta. Mm. Yeah. Um, you see, has some funny moments. Has some cuteness. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, anytime there are naked children. Um... But, As opposed to uncomfortably naked Stalo. You know, first the first series, you know, we get Ryu dies very early on. And yeah. that's that's terrible. And then even even when you're dealing with the death the, the first time Amaro had to kill a zombie. Yeah. Um that was that was hard. Yeah. Um and it it, it was pretty rough. Um it did have a couple of lighthearted moments, but then Zeta was like hardcore. Um it was fifty forty nine episodes of like <laughs> yeah. Um so it was it was good it's to have that balance. Of my experience. Um I mean Tomino had very little to do with origin, so <laughs> so, so uh we'll so write a novel that. later where he kills all the kids early or something. That's okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Um so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> and then some dickhole can argue with you on the internet about whether or not that occurs. I don't know anything about Gundam guys. Don't worry about um, it. Um yeah. The, um, (laughs) so yeah, I think that that's, um, I I think that it's a really great start. I I don't know what, yes, please watch it. Mm -hmm. If you're in even a little bit interested in Gundam, Mm -hmm. check it out. Mm -hmm. The, um, it, it was solid. I don't know what they're going to do with this whole four movie format thing. I, I think that at this pace they could do 20 Right. Um, probably, yeah. and it would be reasonable. Maybe, yeah, I could, maybe ten. Maybe ten. I, I just, I want a whole fucking year episode, year long series season of just him in school. 
in, yeah. in flight school. Like, I just want to see, like, Char, Top Gun kind of thing. But maybe. Well, I mean, like, and there's precedent for that. We have um, Ecole du Ciel, right. which is a, a UC story right. um, about flight school, effectively, mobile suit school. Um, but he doesn't need to go to school. He's already got a kill count. <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah, but I want to see it. I want to see him, like, you know, go up against the guy who's the... the bullshit hot shot and he's coming from nowhere pretending to come from nowhere and Don't you know, kill her, all that kind of typical anime stuff you know all the school drama i want somebody to draw all those desks because <laughs> i'm vicious i guess um mm. that's a reference to i oi hano which you should see uh, which you should see and there's gundam references in it oh one other one other giant robot news from japan from Universal Studios Japan. Oh, oh yeah, they have um, uh, Evangelion mm. in a ride. Mm. Um, one of their roller coastery experience things. I just saw a commercial for it. Um, that's exciting. So you know, if you want to get what is it exactly? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> um, it, I believe it is a roller coaster that has like a screen um, mm. sty- type thing. Um, I'd have to look into it a little bit more, um, but. It looks like they have um, a nice big Evangelion experience. I know that they just opened up um, Attack on Titan. Yeah. Um, where you can get in the mouth of a full size Titan um, and take Which pictures of yourself. Which is something we've all wanted being to do. Eaten alive. Yeah, that sounds um, like great fun. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, Universal Studios Japan sounds cool. Yes. So if they want to send us free tickets to go see and blog about it, you know. Yeah. Um, and we can just bandy the kids off at um, Harry Potter World, right? Because they have fun. I want to go to Harry Potter World. You can go to Harry Potter World. <laughs> yeah, you can play with the Titans. Apparently, uh, they have um, they have butterbeer. That, that doesn't interest me. Not at all. I, I want fit to be fitted for a wand. That's what I want. Ah. The other kind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there we go. Mm. That's... um. That's Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin. We've talked about as long as We've the talked show. almost as long as the movie was. Um, and underst- if you're still listening, wow. <laughs> yeah. Understand mm. that this is basically... I have wanted exactly this yes. for two-thirds of my life. Mm. <laughs> and um, there are some people who have wanted it for longer than two-thirds of your life. Well, there's some people who probably wanted it longer than I've been alive. That's what I'm saying. So... You know that's true, but this is this is really great to see. Mm. Um, it's really wonderful. Um, Sunrise did not drop the ball. Yeah. It's it was beautiful. Mm. It was it was poignant. And, and it doesn't feel like a toy grab. Like I know that that's the claim <laughs> that a lot of people make about like the build fighter series. I don't feel that way. I mean, <laughs> well, it is, <laughs> but, but I mean, it's not. It's a toy gra- grab, maybe, but it's a, like, but it's a great feels show. Good also. Yeah. Um, this is not a toy grab. There's no, there's no like, shoehorned in Gundams in weird places. No, no although I, I do think that the first couple minutes where Shar is fighting the the ships, I that is totally unnecessary, <laughs> and I think it's just to excuse putting a Zaku figure out because is it or is it just because they wanted to make sure that you see Shar shooting things? Because I would have. Frankly, the idea of going through an entire series of movies and not see Char shooting things. Well, I think that it was necessary <laughs> to to, um, to have mobile suit fighting uh, because the gun tanks are that's that was tanks fighting yeah. effectively. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's the reason why they had it in there. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's all. it's no coincidence that that the Char Zaku for this is the first um, mm-hmm. kit. It looks really nice, too, the HG. Right, um, but I mean, if you were really doing a toy grab, then they would have retconned in a bunch of other ships that you needed to buy, and, you know, they they could have done it in a really sleazy way, but they did not. Yeah, I'm actually kind of concerned, in a way, because a lot of times, um, yeah, a lot of times um, Gundam is sort of subsidized by the toys. Um, Well, maybe Build Fighter is... Balancing it out. That's true, but this is a huge theatrical event. These are these are massive movies um, that need to be aired, and there's screenings and things. Well, there's still um, have stuffed animals and yeah costumes for the kids. I'm totally dressing Katie up as little Sela for Halloween. I mean, yeah, it's a given. But right now, it looks like there's really going to only be like maybe two kids out of this movie. Mm, um, we'll see. And if you compare it to Unicorn, like maybe more models and stuff, more. 
busts and figures. That's true. Uh, yeah. So let's see what let's see what Bandai does with that. That'll be that'll be kind of cool. And we'll buy whatever they do with it. Yeah. So yeah, Bandai make make some stuff. Put it out there, please. <laughs> what's, like, the, what's the Japanese word for the Japanese word for? What's the Japanese word for like buying spirit? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> there, there is a there is a good attitude. It was a, an attitude that's considered very Japanese and very good to have, which is like a buying spirit, which is basically like you are invested in the economy of commercial spirit. Is that right? Shogyo Seishin? That yeah. sounds, sounds Seishin. close. Probably. Yeah. I think so. I don't know. It's what our fruit stand guy told us, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was telling us the difference mm, <laughs> between the difference. Japan and other places. Right. That was funny. But, um... Yeah, so there you go. Mm. Most of Gundam the Origin. Mm. Check it out. Yes. Um, please, if you are even remotely interested in Gundam, watch it. Daisukidesk.com? Daisukidesk.net. Dot net. Um, dot yeah, dot, dot net. Mm. Um, and you can watch it for six ninety nine. dollars not bad. Yeah. Um, your friends. Yeah. Um, it is a 72-hour rental, which kind of stinks, but, you know, it is what it is. Mm. Um, and, you know. Oh. All right. Matane. Matane.